Hello. Once again, it's Fred. I'm Sheila. McCoy. And we're going to go over another uh, another one of our boards from the Hatfield McCoy Museum located in Liberty, Kentucky. Come see us. Uh, if you want more information on it, go to www.fredmccoy.com. And um, we went over the one earlier on the lawsuit <clears throat> filed by Ron and Bo McCoy against Jim Vance, and of course, all through it, it was called the um, Hatfields and McCoy lawsuit, and it wasn't, but no, this one here, you may recognize this picture. This is the same picture that was on the other board. That's Bo McCoy, Rio Hatfield, and Ron McCoy. Ron McCoy is from uh, Durham, North Carolina. Bo McCoy is from Waycross, Georgia. Rio Hatfield is from, uh, he's originally from uh, Huntington, West Virginia, I think where he grew up at, but he lives in Waynesboro, Virginia uh, now. And um, uh, this title is Publicity Stunt, just as the uh, uh, lawsuit was titled. And um, this is about the peace treaty, the Hatfield and McCoy peace treaty. And um, we're just going to go through this slow because as Sheila and I was reading some of these newspaper articles, there's so many discrepancies on other things that we really wasn't going to discuss here. We was going to discuss just the uh, peace treaty itself, and we will. The, it will predominantly be about the peace treaty. But we're also going to correct other things as we go through that was in the newspapers and on television and and just some of the myths about the feud that we're going to be able to cover in this segment uh, of this uh, these articles. Um, what did the World Trade Center attacks have to do with the Hatfield and McCoy feud? Absolutely nothing. And once again, excuse me for keeping my back to the camera, but I'd rather read this so I don't lose my spot and I don't cover the same topic two or three times and bore you. Or get ahead of yourself. And, get, and I'm bad to do that. See, she knows me. <laughs> a pen and ink sealed the end of Appalachia's most infamous bloody feud instead of shotgun, instead of a shotgun and bullets. Descendants of the Hatfield and McCoy families gathered Saturday morning in Pipeville to sign a truce, making a largely symbolic and official end to the feud that claimed at least a dozen lives. Signed by more than 60 descendants during the fourth Hatfield McCoy Festival, the truth was taunted as a proclamation of peace, saying, We ask God's grace and love that we be forever remembered as those that bound together the hearts of two families to form a family of freedom in America. We're not saying you don't have to fight because sometimes you do have to fight, but you don't have to fight forever. The more than a century of fighting, of feuding between the McCoys of Kentucky and the Hatfields of West Virginia is believed to have its origins in dispute of a pig. First of all, let's cover, let's cover the first line there. <clears throat> Just this one line. The more than a century of feuding between the Hatfields, the McCoys of Kentucky and the Hatfields of West Virginia. Let's get this straight. Over the years, the media and different people that promoted the feud, they wanted it to be the West Virginia Hatfields against the Kentucky McCoys. And that couldn't be farther from the truth. Um, there's nothing that says that and you're gonna there's gonna be another one here that says the Hatfields were Confederate and the Kentuckys uh, the McCoys were Union. Union and that's not true um, and we've covered it in one of our other videos I remember preacher Ants Hatfield and Asa Harmon McCoy which was the first McCoy killed uh, in 1865 during the Civil War that was the start of the feud period that and when Devil Ants deserted. But Preacher Ants Hatfield and Asa Harmon McCoy both lived in Kentucky. And uh, they were both Union soldiers. Randall McCoy lived in Kentucky. 
Devil Ants Hatfield lived in West Virginia, but yet they were both Confederate. So to say that you were either a Confederate or a Union lived in Kentucky or West Virginia was wrong, and to say that you were either a Hatfield or a McCoy and you lived on either side of the river was wrong. Devil Ants had three McCoys that was on the murder indictment with him yeah. when they shot the three at, McCoy boys. At the pawpaw trees. At the pawpaw trees. On that indictment, and if we haven't showed it already, we will, but on that indictment, there's 23 people. Three of them was actually McCoys. Yeah. Three McCoy boys actually shot three of their McCoy cousins. And those three McCoys worked for Devil Ants in West Virginia, lived in West Virginia, and married Hatfields. And the same thing went on in Kentucky. My great-grandfather, Asa McCoy, married my great-grandmother in 1875. September the 5th, 1875, Nancy Hatfield married Asa McCoy. 1875, three years later, her dad, Preacher Ants Hatfield, would preside over the famous pig trial, 1878. So you've got Hatfields and McCoy still being married and still living in different states. So the uh, newspaper that printed that and the television stations are incorrect when they say the Hatfields of West Virginia and the McCoys of Kentucky. Um, the feud went on for a hundred years. The, the feud never went on for a hundred years. And we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, the feud started in 1865 uh, uh, when they killed Asa Harmon McCoy. But it actually started with the Civil War. And that would have been 1861. And that would have been when Randall McCoy and Devil Ants Hatfield were both Confederate soldiers and in the heat of the battle, Devil Ants up and deserted. He left. Yep. And when he deserted, Randall McCoy, along with my great-great-grandfather, Ace's father, which was Uriah McCoy, were both taken prisoners of war and spent the rest of the Civil War in prison camps. In the worst prison camp there is. Camp Douglas in Illinois. Uh, so a lot of this stuff from 1861 to uh, 1891 when Cotton Top was killed, was hung legally. That was the last homicide during the feud, what was called the feud years. We're gonna raise that up after a while to 1947, but that's that's our last story on this segment and probably the most, the, one of the saddest. Yeah. But uh, the document, it goes on to say, uh, the more than a century old feud between the Hatfields and McCoys uh, of West Virginia is believed to have its origins over a dispute over a pig. The Hatfields and McCoys symbolize violence and feuding and fighting. But by signing this, hopefully people will realize it's not the final chapter. Now, um, let's just go on. They said the document was necessary. Although there had been peace between the families for the past years, because of its importance to its, have a historical document in public record, Rio said after September the 11th, he wanted to make an official statement of peace between the two families to show that if the, if the most deep-seated family feud can be mended, so can the nations unite to protect its freedom. And again, this is nothing but a publicity stunt. And uh, again, you've got a man from North Carolina, Georgia, and Rio's from Virginia, originally from Huntington, West Virginia. Yep. None of the three has grown up in, uh, born and raised in feud country, went to school there. Uh, they, they came back after they were adults. And you're gonna hear one of the most outrageous stories from Daryl Fetty, who is the producer of the miniseries, uh, Hatfield and McCoy's, and yeah. from Rio Hatfield that you'll ever hear. You'll hear tapes, uh, you'll see documentation, and you'll see Rio makes a statement in one of these newspaper articles or TV shows that he was never going to make amends with McCoy's again. He didn't want nothing to do with McCoy's because he didn't trust them. And when we get into the uh, Hubert Bay McCoy story, <clears throat> you'll be the judge once again on who should be trusted and who's a man of their word and, and so forth. But for now, let's stick, Fred, 
Let's stick with the peace tree. Yeah, let's stick with this story first. Now, this is this is June 13th, 2003. And they're saying the World Trade Centers were blown, were run into with the planes. And they're saying that they want to have peace. And if they can have peace, if the Hatfields and McCoys can make peace, then surely so can the rest of the, the, world. the country. Yeah. And uh, you've probably seen this one before. We may have had it up there. Bury the Hatchet, Saturday, May the 1st, 1976. That's Jimmy Wolford, Jimmy McCoy Wolford. His mm -hmm. mother was Rosa McCoy. This is uh, Jim McCoy and Willis Hatfield. This is the only living son to Devil Lance Hatfield, Willis. And this is the oldest living McCoy, Jim McCoy. And in 1976, these are all headlines of the newspapers back home. Mm -hmm. Winston Daily News, Appalachian News Express. That's the McCoy uh, monument where that, the, the McCoy children are buried. That's the one that nobody gets to see. That's what the lawsuit was over. Mm -hmm. And they were dedicating that monument and it was called Bury the Hatchet because it was a peace treaty gathering. They gathered together the only living son of Devil Ants and the oldest living McCoy to uh, make peace right. officially, even though there had been peace for many years. There's since 18, uh, at least since uh, 1891, the hanging of Cotton Top. Then they had a flare up in 1947, but uh, Hello, if you'll notice, the screen's completely different. This is a few days later, and we realized that the uh, battery had run down on the uh, camera, so we're new at this, of course. Uh, so finishing up on this uh, last video on the peace treaty, I've always wanted to cover the peace treaty publicly. Um, Peace treaties are good. There's nothing wrong with peace treaties. Of course, that's about the fourth peace treaty, so-called peace treaty there is. First one was in uh, 1928 with uh, Jim McCoy, the son of Randall McCoy, and with the youngest son of Devil Lance Hatfield, Tennis Hatfield. The second one would have been in, um, uh, well, the second one was probably in about 1972 or three, something like that, but that's irrelevant. Uh, the, that between a Hatfield and McCoy, but the third one was actually uh, Willis Hatfield, uh, Devil Lance's only living son at the time, and with uh, Jim McCoy, James McCoy, uh, which was a uh, descendant of Uriah McCoy, which was the oldest living McCoy at the time. Now, the last and the, the peace treaty that we're discussing now was between Rio Hatfield and Ron McCoy and Bo McCoy. Now, why am I so interested or involved or uh, talking about this, you would have to follow the peace treaty to really understand it. Um, all the different things, since there's 60 uh, so-called descendants of the uh, a feud on that little piece of paper there signed, I can't remember right off, and we don't have the board in front of us. I did discuss it on the board, but there's, um, you know, I, I don't know if you can say that there's that many um, descendants. I know there's none of the Hatfields and McCoys that I grew up with or knew or was older than me or anything in that. The people that's in there is people that wanted to get on camera for the morning show that day and, and, and make media. What concerns me or aggravates me about this peace treaty between Rio Hatfield and Ron McCoy is, remember, Ron McCoy, even though he signed a peace treaty, he, he's the one that sued John Vance. Now, some of these videos I look back in and I see where I say Jim Vance. Well, we've had extensive conversations with John Vance, which is a good man to us. We, we, mm -hmm. we like John Vance. And he is a descendant of Jim Vance, uh, crazy Jim Vance that was, uh, everybody knows, was a, uh, a ruthless uh, fighter. Um, so sometimes I say Jim Vance by mistake, but I, I'm really referring to John Vance. Um, Ron McCoy sued John Vance over his property. He filed a lawsuit in Kentucky over wanting to have access to John Vance's property. We've done extensive video on this, so you can see that if you haven't already. But that upset me because there's never been a lawsuit filed between a Hatfield and McCoy. Contrary to what everybody says about this 
5,000 acres uh, that uh, Randall uh, and Deborah Lance uh, was involved in. Randall McCoy has never been involved in a lawsuit. And if he has produced it, please prove me, prove us wrong. Mm -hmm. Because there's no You're lawsuit welcome. that's ever been filed between Randall McCoy and a Hatfield, much less Randall and Devil Ants. That's false. Um, the only lawsuit that's ever been filed between a, 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 a McCoy over anything like this over land is Ron McCoy from North Carolina that had nothing to do with the family history or anything until he was 35 years old. And he sues John Vance, <laughs> not a Hatfield, but John Vance, but yet he advertises it, Hatfield and McCoy. That's, 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 boys, listen, they're trying to, it's a magician trick. They're distracting you, they're, they're lying to you. For lack of a better word, I'm sorry. This is Fred McCoy and I'm as plain spoken as, as they come. Uh, if you want to call somebody a hillbilly or a mountain person, that would probably be me. But I would much rather you approach me and tell me the truth than to lie to me. And that's what you're getting is a bunch of hogwash. When the same people that goes out and signs a peace treaty are the same people that either filed a lawsuit or worse than the lawsuit is Rio Hatfield and the stories that he has told. And we've also done a video on the Hubert Bay McCoy case. Rio Hatfield to this day has never apologized to uh, Hubert Bay McCoy's daughter. She's in her 80s now. She was a little baby when his grandfather killed her dad. He shot him in the back of the head. No weapon, no nothing. Killed him. And then Rio tells a story that he was in a brothel and he shot his grandfather in the back three times and his grandfather shot and killed him. And he just so happened to be a McCoy. That's as false and frivolous as anything you've ever heard. And then these two gentlemen here, they go out and they get on national TV by signing a peace treaty. A peace treaty that has three other ones in front of it. A peace treaty that nobody need. We, the Hatfields and McCoys, some Hatfields and McCoys never got involved in the feud whatsoever. My great grandparents, Nancy Hatfield and, and Asa McCoy married in 1875 and the hog trial was in 1878, three years later. They made it all through all this stuff. Some people didn't get involved in the feud whatsoever. A lot of Devil Ansa's brothers and family didn't get involved in the feud whatsoever. The ones that did, some of them was in fear because like good, good allies, mm -hmm. uh, Devil Ants put out a contract more or less, said kill them on sight, shoot them on, that's his brother because he wouldn't join in on certain things that he wanted them to do. So for, for Rio and Ron McCoy to join forces and say, hey, we've signed this great peace treaty. Now, this is not a great peace treaty. This was a publicity stunt on their behalf for them to go out. I seen a story the other day on YouTube where Henry Rifle, I don't know, they, people must not do investigations anymore or see who they got working for them or, or working with or, or partnering up with because Henry Rifle has Rio Hatfield's signature on one side of the rifle and Ron McCoy's signature on the other. They made a Hatfield McCoy commemorative <clears throat> rifle. I would love to have, we would love to have for our museum. I don't care, it's $100,000, we'd love to have it. But I wouldn't let you put one in our museum because of the two people that's on there representing the Hatfields and the McCoys. That's, that's totally, do a background check on people. Check people's character. Check their integrity before you let them sign up. They don't represent the Hatfields and McCoys from back home. They don't represent the original Hatfields and McCoys that was born and raised on Blackberry Creek, Make One, West Virginia, all these places. And that's why we wanted to do, she's motioning at me, she, Sheila likes to keep everything on a smooth level. I'm sorry, I'm, I get a little bit carried away, but I, 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 I have held these feelings for so many years. I was a police officer for 40 years. Of course, as a police officer, you can't, and a police chief, you can't comment publicly on things because it's going to cause you problems with your jobs and with your retirement with all these and I never commented. I'm getting to be an old man now and I really don't give a uh, 
okay. I don't give a... You don't uh, care. I don't care uh, about putting stuff out there now. I don't care about telling the truth. Listen, if I'm wrong, correct me. I'm challenging you. If I'm wrong, correct me. Show me a lawsuit where Randall and Devil Ants sued each other. Show me, show me these lawsuits where Devil Ants won a lawsuit against anybody for 5,000 acres. The, the acreage that was between Perry Klein and Devil Ants, they say Devil Ants won it. There's never been a document that I have ever seen, or we have, that shows that. It's been on a TV show. It's been in books. Show us some documentation of this court case. Yep. What happened on that, Perry Klein inherited this property from his father, and Devil Ants timbered it. He timbered the property. Devil Ants don't care about owning people's property. I'm into another video now, yeah. but I have a tendency to do that. But Devil Ants didn't want people's property. He wanted the timber off of their property. It's like the old saying, it's better to ask forgiveness than it is permission. And that's what Devil Ants, he would go out, timber people's property, including co-companies. You'll see some, you'll see some lawsuits with Devil Ants Hatfield. It's not with McCoy's. It's with coal companies where they actually sued him for stealing the timber off of the coal company's property. Once the timber's cut and it's gone and he's got the money for it, oh, I'm sorry, I, I thought the survey showed that was my property. He's done got the timber. There's so much to this Hatfield McCoy. And when I say Hatfield and McCoy, and I talk bad about Hatfields, I am no way talking bad about Kentucky Hatfields because they are the best. They are good people loving people. I'm not talking about all the West Virginia Hatfields. No. I'm talking about Devil Ants Hatfield and the Hatfields that hung with him back in that day. I'm, so I try my best to refer to West Virginia Hatfields, but really I'm not even referring to all of West Virginia Hatfields. There's good and bad and everything. We all know that. Exactly. So don't take me when I say something I'm talking about Devil Ants and his Hatfields that was involved in the feud, the killings, the deaths, the thefts. There was a lot of thieving going on back then under the color of the Logan Wildcats. And that was nothing more than Jesse James and, and Black Bart and, and uh, the Cole Younger and all them. He just had a name for his group rather than bank robbers or uh, this and that. He, he done it under the color of the Civil War, he said. Okay, we're well, talking about Rio, though. Talking about Rio, she, she's getting on to me. That finishes the the uh, peace treaty, treaty. Mm -hmm. the peace treaty with Ron McCoy and Rio Hatfield and Bo McCoy. And uh, sorry that I've drug it out this long, but I, and we're, eventually we're going to get back to the museum and stories on the museum and the artifacts and the memorabilia. And I'm sure you all are going to enjoy some of these videos. If you don't enjoy the ones where I, I get passionate or I get to talking about just flip it off. It's no big deal. If you want to know the information, if you want to know some of the truth, watch it because I have no reason to lie to you. I could care less. I'm making these videos so when I'm dead and gone or Sheila's dead and gone, the truth will be there. If, if a person wants to ever go out and look for the truth, it's on these videos. And again, and if you prove us wrong, prove us wrong. Last one. I know she's motioning for me. A guy wrote us the other day on our video that we had with Devil Ants' height. We have we have videotapes of Jimmy Wolford telling us how he came up with the song, mm -hmm. Six Foot Four and all this and that about Devil Ants. We have, he made that up as a joke and made a song about it and it carried on through the years. And that's how stories go. But a guy wrote, he said, Devil Ants was six four, Cap was six three, Johnsy was six seven and all these different things. And and that's not true. Where's the documents? That's Where's the documents? We don't want to hear, you know, we've heard these stories all of our life. We don't want to hear what you're saying. You know, and then he, he wants to get personal. He thinks I'm feuding. Listen, I'm half Hatfield. <laughs> I'm as much Hatfield. I'm Kentucky Hatfield. I'm yeah. not Devil Ants Hatfield. I, 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 I want no part to be with Devil Ants Hatfield. I'm Preacher Ants Hatfield's descendant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm proud of Preacher Ants. I think he was good a holy man. man, a good man, and a fair man. Devil Ants was a thief and a murderer. Call it like you see it, people. If you want to honor Devil Ants, honor him. But call him what he was. Don't try to make him out to be a 
a holy man and all this and that when he had the devil's church. Don't make them out. Call them like he is. He, he was, uh, Well, look at the nicknames. Preacher Ants. Devil Lance Hatfield. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it stands... Preacher and the devil. It stands for itself, for what they are. Um, but he made a comment, and he said, the McCoys got their butts what? Uh, Hatfields want... Listen, I'm a Hatfield and a McCoy, first of all. Second of all, nobody won the feud. Nobody won the Hatfield and McCoy feud. Take it to the bank. Yeah. Randall McCoy yes. lost six of his children. He lost a lot of family members during that time. Uh, mm -hmm. Not counting just his children, but Jeff McCoy, his nephew, yep. all these different ones, not counting Rosanna, who died from a broken heart and pneumonia and everything else, but she also, she had a sad life. Mm -hmm. So he lost, he was a sad man. But let's talk about Devil Ants. Did Devil Ants win the feud? He spent, he went to his grave with Kentucky murder warrants on him when he died. He couldn't come to Kentucky. It, the three quarters of his life because he was wanted for murder and had warrants on him. He hid in caves. He slept with his boots on. This read the statements from Cotton Top and Messer and all of them. They slept with their boots on with their Winchesters beside of them. I'd much rather have my wife beside of me with my boots off. I may sleep with a gun next to me, but I've also got my wife. He didn't have that. So the Hatfields or the McCoys didn't win. There was no winners in the feud. Right. Everybody lost. Right. So, anyway, we've enjoyed doing this video. Fred and Sheila McCoy. Sheila's behind the camera. And Hatfield McCoy Museum in Liberty, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. Hatfields McCoy's Museum .com. Um, She posts a new video or two every day. Every day there'll be a new video. Mm -hmm. Because before I pass away, I want to get some things out there. I want to tell some truths. And we want our if kids I don't tell truths, huh? We want our kids to know their history. We want the kids to know, our grandkids to know, and right. everybody. And if you don't want to listen to it, and you want to get on these Facebook pages and say, no, this happened or that happened, that's fine. You can do that, too. It's, it's America. Do whatever you want. If you people watching these videos are as intelligent as I think most of you are, you want the truth. Do and your own you, research. Everybody likes CSI. Everybody likes to be an investigator. Investigate what we say. Don't take our word for it. Investigate it. If I say something wrong or mistruth, call me on it. But please have documentation. Back please up. back it up. I don't want to hear what your thoughts are, your opinion is. We want to see evidence. Love y'all. Seeing is believing. God is great. We, we, even Rio and Ron McCoy, uh, they made some mistakes and they've made some publicity marketing here. I guess maybe it's paid off for them in life on their books, on their, but everybody's got books on the feud. Everybody's got opinions. Uh, you don't have to uh, do what they did. And, you know, I don't want to get in that same thing with them. I'm not, I, I hate to sit here and like I'm attacking them, but they brought it on themselves. Um, they brought it on themselves. I'm just calling their hand on it. I'm okay. She's waving bye <laughs> to me. Uh, Please like, subscribe, and hit that bell. Thank you. Thank you all. Have a good evening. Bye.